Yo, what's going on, G.I. family? It's your boy, G.I. Teasy, back with another VZ. Let's go ahead and get into it, you feel me? You know, Pluto I always love when I do my videos. He right here with me at all times. You want to see him? Go to G.I. Vlogs right now. But we're going to get straight into the video. Uh -huh. We got Louisiana rapper J.D. Youngin, R.I.P. That was one of my favorite rappers, man. You know, I a young boy, but I J.D. Youngin 20 times harder. He was just as good, minus all the weird shit. You dig what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and get straight into it, man. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Guaboy and Twitter, Guaboy And we're going to see what happened after, you know what I'm saying, he passed away. Youngin's brutal murder shocked the rap game back in 2022. For sure. Nobody expected what his homies were going to do to get revenge. Now, I ain't going to lie. I don't condone violence. But in certain situations, when you a street nigga and you in a gang and your homie died to some street shit, bro, you got to slide. So what they did, you know, I don't condone violence, like I said, but I don't blame him because he died to some street shit. So they had to get back. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, it's what you got to do. They allegedly started sliding on the ops less than an hour after J.D. Young had died. And now the whole crew is facing a Rico case. Yeah, they almost choked my Nigga, what? That's 16 people on the Rico. God damn, nigga. Oh, shit, they ain't playing down south. They going to Louisiana prisons? Oh, hell no. Nah. J.D. Youngin's hometown of Ogalusa, Louisiana, isn't in the news much. It's in the middle of nowhere and only has around 10,000 people that live there. But it has one of the highest crime rates in America. And for a few hours on July 27th, 2022, it turned into a war zone. Jay had been fighting some serious cases for a couple of years, but in July 2022, he was out celebrating his freedom. He had just pleaded guilty to a gun case in June and was let out on supervised release. And his fans were ready to start hearing some new music. Hell yeah. While he was sitting outside of a house in Bogalusa with his dad having some drinks, a truck pulled up and three shooters hopped out and started letting off shots. Jay's dad started busting back while Jay and him tried to get inside the house for cover. But that's when two more shooters came up from behind the house and started letting off shots too. Damn! By the time it was over, Jay had been hit at least eight times and was tragically pronounced dead at the hospital. I didn't know they did it like that, bro. That was damn near like an assassination. They want that boy gone. R.I.P., but that was like some assassination type shit. They playing that out and they just, man. That's but the violence wasn't over yet. While the cops were at the hospital trying to figure the situation out, they got a report about another shooting less than an hour after Jay was killed. On the other side of the city, someone had started letting off shots in traffic and hit up someone's whip. But luckily, nobody got hurt. The cops knew from the jump that it was probably related to Jay getting shot. But his homies were still allegedly sliding through Bogalusa looking for ops. That night, another shooting went down after someone pulled up to another house and started letting off shots. Everyone made it out of the situation alive and without getting hit. But it was clear that Jay's death was already having a massive impact on the town. Hell yeah. The rap fans were shocked when their news broke about Jay's murder. He was on his way up in the industry and was racking up millions of streams every time he dropped. Jay was working with huge rappers like Lil Durk and Boosie Badass. Oh God. And nobody expected him to get taken out like that. But that's only because the deadly street beef Jay was wrapped up in hadn't been all over the news. So fans had no idea what was really going on in Jay the Youngin City. Bogalusa and all the towns around it are small. And most of the time when people hear about Louisiana, it's news coming out of Baton Rouge or for New sure. Orleans. For sure. So what most of Jay's fans didn't know is how active the streets of Bogalusa really are. So we're breaking down the crazy story that was going down behind the scenes. Yeah, I never heard no goddamn Bogalusa before Jay the Youngin. Like, it's a lot of country towns in Tennessee, Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, the goddamn Alabama. It's a lot of small country towns that really get active that you'll never hear about. But they, they got a lot of shit going on in them country ass towns. Boy, you better be careful going out there. Jay and his homies ripped a crew in Bogalusa called 23. But his death might have been because of another set they were cool with called La Familia, aka FG. La Familia's clicked up with 23 and another set called Hunger Game. La Familia has affiliates all over the area around Bogalusa. And a few years ago, they started beefing with a set called Purple City Boys, aka PCB, from a town called Roseland. Mm. According to reports, La Familia and Purple City Boys didn't have any issues back in the day, but that all changed around 2019 and the situation turned deadly. A rapper from La Familia named 700 Jeezy started beefing with a dude from Purple City Boys named Taiki. Mm. Nobody outside of the situation knows what was really going down behind the scenes, but the cops say that Jeezy and Taiki started dissing each other, and in 2020, one of them ended up dead. 
Damn. On June 21st, 2020, a bunch of Purple City Boy affiliates were at a Father's Day celebration in St. Helena Parish. Everything was cool at first, but when Ty Keith was walking to his car, 700 Jeezy allegedly caught him lacking and left him dead on the scene. Damn. After Ty Keith was killed, his homie, Purple City Boy Buck, dropped a track called Regardless in honor of him. And just two weeks after 700 Jeezy allegedly killed Ty Keith, 700 Jeezy linked up with Jay the Youngin for their own music video. Then two days after Jay and 700 Jeezy made the video, the beef between Purple City Boys and La Familia got an innocent woman killed. Oh my god, I be hating when innocent people be getting killed because of these beefs, bro, because they don't even make no sense why innocent people is getting hit in the crossfire. Y'all supposed to walk niggas down. Why is y'all getting innocent people hit in a crossfire, man? 8th, 2020, there was a birthday party going down in the woods around Roseland. Hundreds of people showed up and were having a good time. But then out of nowhere, shots started going off and everyone started running for their lives. According to the cops, Purple City Boys and La Familia ran into each other at the party and got into an argument. Then both sides upped their straps and started shooting. According to some reports, over 100 shots went off. But when it was all over, the only person who got killed was an innocent woman named Zion Hutcherson. Zion didn't have anything to do with the situation, but she got caught up in the crossfire and was tragically killed just a few feet away from her baby. 700 Jeezy allegedly let off some of the shots that killed Zion Hutcherson, and after it went down, he did the race and tried to escape from Texas. Jada Youngin allegedly helped him hide out while he was on the run, but the cops caught up to 700 Jeezy in August 2020 and booked him on second degree murder charges. Damn. Then in 2021, the news broke that Jada Youngin was wrapped up in the case too. He was arrested for accessory to second degree murder and obstruction of justice for helping 700 Jeezy escape after the shooting went down. But Jada Youngin told the cops he didn't know anything about the situation. Nobody's been booked for Jada Youngin's murder yet. But rumors say it was Purple City Boys clapping back for the death of Ty Keith. If 700 Jeezy was the one who pulled the trigger on Ty Keith and Jay helped Jeezy out after it went down, it makes sense that Purple City Boys could have wanted to take Jay out. And after Jay the Youngin was killed, his homie FG Famous is allegedly the one who started sliding immediately. FG Famous and Jay the Youngin have been tight since they were kids and were linking up in the booth too. But both of them were still connected to the streets. Right. FG Famous allegedly started putting major pressure on the ops after Jay died. Rumors say FG Famous was involved with at least one of the other shootings that went down right after Jay was killed. And on the track, In the Name of 23, he rapped, That was my brother, nigga. What the f you think? I ain't gonna slide. I'm trying to flush a nigga. That side, and you gonna die. I swear I wish I was right there. I would cut back with my nine. And on the shelf, we ain't gonna stop slinging that iron. I got this 30 like I'm Steph. I'm trying to put one in his mind. You gotta feel how I just felt. On 23, all right. FG Famous had been in the trenches since he was a kid, and the ATF had been on this case for a while. Mm. Before Jay the Youngin died, ATF. the cops of Bogalusa tried to pull FG Famous over for a legal tent on his whip. But FG Famous tried to do the dash and started speeding over 100 miles an hour through the town. Then he ditched his car and tried to hide underneath the house. And that's where the cops found him with a pound of weed and two guns. FG famous bro what so you did the race and then instead of ditching the instead of ditching the weed and ditching the guns they caught you with the weed and the guns come on bro come on big dog you, you gotta move better than that he was out of jail when jd youngin got shot but the feds came through and arrested him in new orleans while he was shopping for something to wear at jay's funeral and now he's facing a way bigger case too in february 2024 News broke that a bunch of J.D. Youngin's homies were getting hit with the RICO case. The feds have been investigating them for years and claim they've been running drugs and guns all over Louisiana, killing ops, and way more. One of the dudes named in the indictment is Kelzon Clark, aka Boo, and J.D. Youngin allegedly shouted him out on the track Evil when he raps, who claim they gonna step for you, heard these was tripping, shit, I know just what to do, pull up with my cousin Boo, might send shots hanging out the roof. It's not clear if the Rico indictment is going to cover the shootings that went down after Jay was killed, but the cops have been investigating his homie since 2017, and obviously they think they have enough evidence to bring down the whole crew. The feds had already picked up Jay the Youngin one time before he died. Jay had been in the trenches for a long time, and even after he popped off in the rap game, he was getting caught up in legal drama. Back in 2019, the cops pulled him over and found weed and oxy pills in his whip. Plus one of his homies in the car with him had a gun. Jay was supposed to be performing at Rolling Loud, which would have been a huge win for his career, but he missed the show because he got booked. Then in March 2020, the cops raided Jay the Youngin's house after he allegedly put hands on a pregnant woman. 
When the police pulled up, Jay tried to hide in the attic, but they found him up there and took 24K in cash from his crib too. Damn. 2021 was an even crazier year for Jay. In April 2021, he was booked in Georgia for possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute, and the cops said they also found a bunch of lean, oxy pills, and guns on him at the same time. Then just a few months later, Jay the Youngin was hit with the accessory to second degree murder charge over the 700 Jeezy and Tyke situation. I ain't gonna lie, that nigga was in the streets. That nigga was in the streets heavy, bro, because that's, man, he was catching charges back. To, that's why he, he was dropping, but it was hard for him to stay consistent because he was catching so many goddamn charges, bro. Back to back to back to back. And that's what happened when you in the streets, bro. You're going to go to jail or you're going to pass away, bro. It's not a lot of ways out that street shit. And after he bonded out, Jay ended up right back behind bars. In October 2021, the cops caught him speeding down the highway with his passenger door open. And when Jay pulled over, they found a baby sitting in a woman's lap without a seatbelt. Jay bonded out again, but that's when the feds got involved. One month later, the ATF booked Jay the Youngin on federal charges. It's not clear what they were trying to get him for because he was killed before the case could go to trial. But the cops were all over Jay. And that's why a lot of people thought a Rico was coming way before the news was official. While most people think Purple City Boys was involved with Jay the Youngin's death, there are also some crazy rumors going around saying that the situation involves Jay's homies in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm. When Jay the Youngin started popping off in the rap game, he was linking up with other artists all over the South. And a few years before he died, he tapped in with Young and Ace from Jacksonville. Ace has been at war with another Jacksonville rapper named Julio Fulio for years, and their beef has made news all over the country. Jay linked up with Young and Ace right when the war in Jacksonville was really kicking off. Bodies were dropping on both sides, and Ace and Fulio started trading some of the wildest diss tracks ever. One of the people who died in their beef was Fulio's younger brother, Lil Bibby. Mm, oh, Bibby was his little brother? Him like crazy. Oh! And young and started rocking with Ace. He hopped in the beef too, and even clowned Bibby by wearing a jersey with his name on it. Even though Jay wasn't actually involved with the streets in Jacksonville at all, he made it clear that he was picking a side in the war. And that's why some people believe that Fulio's people had something to do with his death. After Jay died, Fulio hopped on IG and started clowning his death. Fulio got a lot of hate for dissing Jay the Youngin, so he went live and said that Jay was acting like Fulio was his op. Jay was dissing his dead homies, so Fulio said he wasn't gonna just sit back and let it slide without saying anything. Fulio and his crew have allegedly caused all kinds of violence in Jacksonville, but there's no evidence that they were actually involved in Jay's murder. Fulio's not the only rapper that people are trying to tie the case to though. Back in the day, Jay the Youngin was also cool with NBA Youngboy and his team. Jay and his homie FG Famous linked up with OG33 for the track No Mask, and Jay the Youngin also dropped a track with Youngboy's homie Quando Rondo called Thuggin For Real. Jay the Youngin and Youngboy ended up making some music together too, but there was drama going down behind the scenes. Jay posted a snippet of an unreleased track that he had with Youngboy, and Youngboy hopped in the comments and told him to delete it. After that, Jay started airing everything out and claimed that Youngboy was upset because Jay was hooking up with Youngboy's ex. Jay the Youngin dropped I ain't gonna lie, Janita got a lot of man. Man. And Janita got to sit a little thought ass down, bro. Vine, Jay, shit, who else know who the hell she was? And she just, she needs to sit her little hotty thotty ass down. God damn, young boy always ready to crash out about that burnt out. Chill your ass out, man. The track 38K and raps. I'm in my bag and niggas pissed, and plus he mad about it. When I'm so he was steady asking me about shit and begging me to leave her alone. This nigga acting like a bitch. Then Jay took another shot at young boy for making the comment about the track and said, you put the comment on my post, they laughed about that shit. But I was laughing when your baby mama gags all on my Jay the youngin also took a shot at young boy's manager Dump, who had been shot and killed during young boy's beef with the set called TBG. Dump and young boy were really tight. So Jay started off his 38K track with the line, and I don't dump no ashes either finna get real disrespectful. I don't give a Jay the Youngin even shouted out Young and Ace's homie Queso on the track. Queso was allegedly one of the deadliest guys in Ace's crew. Right. And on 38K, Jay was talking about sending them on hits with the line, Draco, tell them niggas lay low. I say go, my shooters, they gonna take souls. And I know a real stepper, shout out Queso. And I know a real hoe, they call him Baby Joe. I think it was disrespectful. Got back at Jay on the track, step on shit when he rapped, Scared to be in the beef, lying like he in the streets, knowing he'll be dead if we knew just where he was. So we've been stepping on them ducks. But after that, the beef pretty much died down. 
there's nothing linking Youngboy or his crew, but the rumors started flying after a video came out showing J.D. Young's family and friends listening to 38K during Jay's funeral. No one knows for sure, but it doesn't really make sense for Youngboy to be involved with the situation at all. Jada Young and Man, ain't no real telling who, you know what I'm saying, who who got him killed. But when you got ops, bro, and you in them streets knee deep like that, you just never know what's going to happen at any time. So that's why it's advised people to stay out the streets, man. Please stay out the streets. It's not worth it. Please, man. Just stay out the goddamn streets. It's not worth it. It's not what you think, man. For real. Shit is sad.